Welcome back to This Week in Bevy, where we cover what happened last week in the Bevy game engine ecosystem. Bevy is a game engine built in Rust that heavily adopts the ECS paradigm. So let's get into it. This week, we started to hear rumblings of Bevy 0.14's release cycle just getting started. This includes the creation of a new 0.14 release crew working group, which is a formalization of a method of working that happened fairly recently. Alice talked a bit about the creation of the group and what it is trying to achieve over on Mastodon. There is now also a milestone for the 0.14 release that Alice covered in depth. So check it out if you're interested in her deep dive of what's left to do for 0.14. In the meantime, here's what else has been happening this week. The cone primitive got meshing support, and notably this includes UV coordinates that are polar coordinates. So textures are applied as if looking at the cone from above as you can see with this target texture that is applied to this cone. A new gizmo was created for 2D and 3D rounded boxes. The gizmos usually get added to the 2D and 3D gizmos example, so these examples are starting to get pretty busy. But you can see it here on the left for 3D, and here in the middle, which is gonna be hard to see, in 2D. Both 2D and 3D support modifying the corner and edge radius, as well as the arc segments. In this 2D example, you can see the border radius going into the rounded box, here you can see it going as you might expect a rounded corner to exist, and the same for 3D. And Patrick has been on an absolute tear with rendering PRs lately, including this week, starting off with depth of field as a post-processing effect. Depth of field, also known as that blurry effect the cameras have when they're focusing, includes two different kinds in this PR. The first is hexagonal bokeh, and the second is a Gaussian blur. As you can see here, the TR is super informative and has a ton of information, so if you're interested in this, I highly suggest reading it. It's got a bunch of links to different blog posts and implementations and papers that describe exactly what's going on here. To make use of depth of field, you add the depth of field settings to an entity containing a camera 3D component. Following that up is God rays, also known as volumetric fog and volumetric lighting, or even also known as light shafts. I think it's easiest to describe God rays or light shafts by viewing these images which show the directional light flowing through a volumetric fog material. This can be very directly these light shafts and a very similar effect in this outdoor scene. The PR introduces two new components, volumetric fog and volumetric light. Volumetric light is applied to directional lights, which allows them to interact with entities that have volumetric fog on them. If you're familiar with the Blender Bevy Components workflow repo, you'll know that this is a set of Blender plugins and Bevy plugins for enhancing the ability to work inside of Blender as an editor and get that data into Bevy. Work on this is continuing with a whole bunch of changes, and I'm just, in general, really excited to see Blender and Bevy integration getting better and better. And finally, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer-level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And that brings us from the overview into the showcase with updates from this Animal Crossing-inspired world. This is an implementation of an action bar and items relating to different spells that can be used. The items can be individually accessed via number key. And Project Harmonia had some interesting snapping updates. Placing furniture with, you know, fully float coordinate positioning can be tough. So why not implement a component that allows the size of these objects to snap onto other entities with the same component? Project Harmonia is available on GitHub. This pinball game is pinball with enemies, or at least the beginnings of a pinball game with enemies. Health bars and juice are still to come. Improvements to Myriad Empires include the ability to garrison characters and agents in settlements, which you can see in the UI here. While Slavic Castles is a card game we saw last week, it's playable on itch.io, and as of this week, you can find it on GitHub. Following that up, To Build a Home dropped Igui in favor of working with Bevy UI to build their interfaces. That said, they plan to focus on gameplay and not UI overall. Wiggly Grace is a demo of visual audio generation, so click through to hear it because, you know, that's what you kind of have to do for audio to not hear my voice talking over it. <laughs> the source is available on GitHub with some instructions in the Discord thread for how to get this demo up and running. In the next showcase, we have a proof of concept for a power-up menu. One really interesting part of this proof of concept is that it's fully localizable by taking advantage of Fluent and a custom integration crate. Power-ups in this menu are components that get attached to the player's entity when chosen. Interesting aspects of this approach include storing on hit components, which themselves contain components. When that entity gets hit, it inserts a copy of the component that's stored inside of the on hit into the target. The fluent part of this is the localization system, self-described as a localization system for natural sounding translations. 
and it of course has an implementation in Rust. This game demo was run on YouTube, allowing chatters to come in and decide what happens by taking advantage of 12 different possible commands. You can see a command log in the upper right hand corner and see the chat on the YouTube video actually matching up with that. And one of the really awesome ways in which Bevy exists in the world is just how modular it is. And one of the more commonly used crates outside of the it's a Bevy app use case is Bevy ECS. This YouTube video showcases a project that uses Bevy ECS to power a pixel simulated version of the classic snake game. This game is often referred to as a falling sand simulation or a falling sand game. This one in particular is also available on itch.io. And finally, for our last showcase, this showcase's author has been working with Bevy and Rust for about two weeks now. They're in research mode to build a fighting game and decided to build the editor for setting up hitboxes and hurtboxes first. And that's it for showcases. On to our crate releases. Bevy TNUA 0.18 came out this week. Bevy TNUA is a floating character controller, which means that instead of constantly touching the ground, the character floats above it, which makes many aspects of the motion control simpler. The major change in 0.18 is the addition of a max slope parameter, which can be used to prevent the character from walking on ground that is too steep. Bevy 2D view angle uses events and custom macros to enable the ergonomic storage and usage of multi-view angle sprite sheets. As you can see, this little froggy hopping around in different angles. And now we get our first view of dark mode on crates.io. This crate, debug if, or debug if, got its first release this week. This crate isn't Bevy specific, but was built to work on Bevy apps. It provides additional debug macros that make it easier to debug things in loops. This includes the macro debug once, which there's an alternative implementation of inside of Bevy, spelled D-E-B-U-G once. This crate also includes the brand new debug if not equals and debug if hash not equals, which only print changed values. And finally, Bevy Quinet's 0.8 update adds Replicon integration via the Bevy Replicon Quinet crate. These crates altogether are for client server game networking. And that's it for crate releases this week. Into devlogs, we've got Reimagining Astortion Devlog Zero. Astortion is a Metroidvania 2D puzzle platformer game that started life in 2020 and recently reset development with more concrete goals. The devlog includes discussion of game mechanics as well as Blender integration, designing splines in Blender and then bringing them into Bevy. The developer calls out Bevy's asset system and hot reload specifically as being a huge workflow improvement over their previous iteration and say they intend to go deeper into this topic in their next video. And of course, if this game looks interesting to you, you can wishlist Astortion on Steam today. And finally, covering the educational section, we've got a Bevy Mesh Terrain Editor tutorial, which is, as it says, a tutorial video for how to use Bevy Mesh Terrain Editor. Following that, we've got a drag and drop player built LDTK levels demo. Bevy supports drag and drop files natively using events. And we can take advantage of this and other crates in the ecosystem like Bevy ECS LDTK to enable players of our games to build their own levels using something like LDTK and drag and drop them onto the app to play them using the game logic we've already provided. In addition to the video, the source is also available on GitHub. And that's it for this week. We've covered the pull requests already, but there are a bunch of bug fixes, small documentation, and other changes that have also gone in this week. So if you're interested in those, check out the rest of the pull requests merge. And of course, if you're looking to contribute, we've also got the pull requests open this week, which you can help out by reviewing. And of course, there's a section here for issues that were open this week if you're looking to get a little deeper. That's it for this week in Bevy. I'll catch you next week, and I hope the rest of your week is good.